welcome to this lecture. Today, we are going to deal with these topics little quickly but in detailed approach. My name is Gunjan Subedi and as always, I'll be guiding you in this topic with practical explanation and examples when necessary. Before starting, let me kindly remind you to subscribe to My Lean University, which is my initiative to deliver free and quality professional education to your screen. Now, probability impact matrix that we are going to learn now is a very important management tool that is basically used in the risk analysis in project management uh, professional certification, if you are looking for that. It is also quite common in Six Sigma projects, uh, basically green and black belts use it often uh, in uh, studying the project risk. It is also used in the lean management and in the operational management. And in Kaizen projects, which are the continuous improvement projects, we generally study the impact of certain changes or the risk that could be bared by in the Kaizen projects with the help of uh, probability impact matrix. Now, the probability impact matrix studies the probability of occurrence of any risk. The risk could be small or weak and potentially there could be higher or lower chances of its occurrence. And we study the probability as well as impact of that risk in the probability impact matrix. There is an important term which is used to study the risk which is called the risk score. A risk score is the multiplication of the probability and impact and its risk is assigned with the weight of its probability and risk. So the formula was risk number was the multiplication of probability and risk. So both the probability of occurrence of the event and impact of the event causing the risk or to cause the risk both affects the risk number. Now let's study about the impact. Impact is in fact the seriousness that any event in the project can bring into the project. Some project activities may cause higher impact on the project and some project activities may cause lower impact. So if any activity negatively impacts the project in a much broader term, then the risk score will also be high. And also if the probability of the occurrence is higher, it will affect the risk score that we just discussed. Basically, we can assign different numbers or weights to the impact. For example, there could be the insignificant impact. These are the issues where no real threat or impact to the organization or the process or the project is happening. Here, the x-axis at the bottom shows us the impact number. The lowest impact number is 0 0.05. So, this is the insignificant impact. Sometimes the impact could be minor. And these impacts are the risk that creates minor atypical situation, but that won't impact or block the flow of the organizational system or that wouldn't affect the project at all. 0 0.1 here at the bottom of the table is the assigned impact number for the minor impact. The impact could also be moderate and moderate impact weight is, is assigned for those issues that could create negative consequences or could cause threats and problem to the organizational people and activity. We have assigned here the weight is of 0 0.2 for the moderate impact. And sometimes the impact may outnumber the advantages and they cause critical risk to the project or the organization. So here at the bottom, we see critical impact number at 0 0.4. And when we reach such number, there are risks that one or multiple negative consequences can happen on the project or department areas and these may also cause dangerous situation for the related projects or the process. So we should be aware as soon as we reach this critical impact weight is. And the another weight is assigned for impact is catastrophic impact when any activity in the project impacts the project in a negative way and in much broader term or if it affects the project in high level then they are called the catastrophic impacts and catastrophic impacts are issues that create extremely serious impacts to the whole system which causes an entire operation to fail or severely impact individuals close to the events it may also cause the minor or major accidents and may result in the entire failure of the project now, I've given this table to explain 
how we can assign different impact numbers based on their assessment. We could have different objectives for the risk assessment. For example, we can assess the risk to the project on the basis of cost, schedule or quality. These are just the made up figures regarding the cost, schedule and quality so that I can explain you better. You can have your own definitions of the impact ranging from very low to very high. Here, for example, if the activity that I develop does not cause any insignificant impact on cost, I give it a very low impact number of 0.05. And if it is a very, very costly project where there are higher risks, then I assign it a very high impact number 0.8. Regarding schedule and quality also, if the schedule and quality has an insignificant impact on schedule or quality, I assign them a very low score of 0.05. And as the impact of that activity on the project increases, if certain changes in the project entirely affects the schedule or quality of the product or process, then I assign it a very high impact number of 0.8. And all the weights in between could be explained in the similar way. You can use this table for the risk assessment for your projects also. I'll be providing you this particular table as resources. So please do not forget to download it. Now what's probability? Probability is the chances of occurrence of the event or chances that those risky activities are going to happen. There could be a very unlikely probability for those activities or those project events that are very unlikely to happen. These are extremely rare and can be ignored as a threat to a broad organizational system. We have uh, assigned the score of 0.1 for the very unlikely probability. And sometimes we can even give it a weight in between 0.1 to 0.3. These both are the very unlikely and unlikely probability. 0.3 is the unlikely probability and there could be possible probability also, which are plausible but uncommon situations that can develop for the risk to the certain operations or strategies. Next is the likely probability where we study the common risk scenarios that must be resolved immediately to avoid hazards in the system flow. Similarly, if there are serious issues that are very likely to occur and can have a major impact on the whole organization, we assign them the very likely probability. The very likely probability is 0.9 that we have assigned. Now seeing the risk score or say this uh, probability impact matrix over here, Suppose if the impact of a project event or solutions to the problem or say any project activity is very high. Suppose it causes a very high or catastrophic impact, but the probability is very unlikely. So what is the risk score? I'll give it some time for you to think the impact is very, very high and the probability is quite unlikely or very unlikely. What will be the risk score? In this case, we have to see the impact score of the high impact, which is 0.8. And we have to see the associated probability rule. We were talking about the very high impact and very unlikely probability. So the very unlikely row falls here and the most impactful column lies here. They intersect at 0.08. So the risk score is 0.08. And as I have shown here, there are different colors. Generally, those risk scores that are green in color or if our events uh, falls in category of these green risk scores, we can say that there is a weak threat by those activity to the project. And if they fall in this orange region, we can say that there could be some chances of threat to the projects and we need to be aware. And if our risk score falls in any of these uh, red regions, the project activity has a very high risk score and those activities consequently poses the higher threat to the project. So from this matrix also, we see that as our impact increases and as the probability of occurrence of that event increases, if both are high, those project activities are riskier. And if the impact of the any change in the project activity or any particular activity is low, and if the probability is also low, they poses the very low risk to the project. So far, we studied the probability impact matrix on the basis of the threats. 
We can also study the probability impact matrix and the basis of opportunities. And also so far we studied the probability impact matrix based on the continuous countable integers. We can also assign the attributes such as very high, high, medium, low to the probability and the impact. And in the same way, we can also form the opportunities table. In the threats table, we generally study what is the threat of particular event to the overall project. And in the opportunities table, we can study what's the better opportunity or which project activities or tasks should be selected so that it could positively improve the project. For example, here at the bottom, the impact is very low and also the probability of occurrence is also low. So this task or this particular project activity has low impact. That means consequently, the risk score is also low. So as the risk score is low, we can select that particular activity. So this is just for showing you that we can assign the probability in forms of the number or in forms of any attributes. Probability impact matrix could be represented in either way. Before ending this lecture, let me remind you to join my Lean University's premium membership and enjoy a total free access for a limited time inside my Lean University's online library and get tons of free courses, free books, and lecture topics on project management, Lean and Six Sigma, operations and supply chain, productive and preventive maintenance, quality maintenance, data science, industry and sales management, Agile and Scrum, Kaizen or continuous improvement, and much more totally free. No strings attached. As we have limited seats, only the early subscribers will be given open access inside the premium membership. And remember, it's totally free. Please subscribe and share the video if you share the common belief that professional education should be accessible to all.